Intel is creating several thousands of jobs by revamping uh, a number of existing factories in a couple of states. Uh, those will be temporary jobs, 18 to 24 months in construction, but they may be eight to 800 to 1,000 jobs that end up lasting, uh, high-tech jobs. I'm joined now by the CEO of Intel, Paul Ottolini. Paul, thank you for joining us. You're welcome, Ellie. You told one of my colleagues uh, some time ago that it costs you a lot more money to build a factory in the United States, a manufacturing facility in the United States, and to maintain it than it would overseas. And three-quarters of your company's revenues are from overseas. So why choose to build it in the United States? Well, about three-fourths of our factories are in the United States. And so we're, we're not, whereas this is not new for us, uh, uh, we, we are building this generation of factories, uh, these, these factories in the U.S. There's a brand new factory in Oregon and then re retooling uh, four other factories uh, in Oregon and Arizona for a total of about six to eight billion dollars. So it's a very significant investment. Uh, it does cost a bit more to work to, to uh, build one of these factories from scratch in the U.S. It's not labor costs, as one might think. It has to do with uh, the, uh, the kinds of grants that other countries would give you, tax credits and those kinds of things. And what I've been asking, uh, calling on the administration to do is to consider doing those kinds of things for anyone who wants to invest in the U.S., whether it's a foreign company or a domestic company, to create an incentive to put jobs here to retool manufacturing in this country. All right. You are not up to the level that you were in in terms of uh, employment at your height, uh, but you are bringing some employees back. Uh, w when do we get back to that sort of employment? Because we know large companies like yours in America collectively are sitting on some capital, and uh, many companies, unlike yours, are not deploying that. They're not building factories. They're not employing more people. What has to happen to get them to do that in order to bring employment back up or bring unemployment back down. That's, that's something I think a lot of our viewers are concerned about. Well, well, first of all, let me just correct. Our story is a little bit different than others. We, we actually did, did a restructuring of the company in 06 through 08 before the recession. And we did that uh, because we were th wanted to change the direction of where the company was going. So I don't think we're, we have any plans to get back to those peak levels. We, uh, we've exited a number of businesses and so forth to get to the levels we're at today. And we're, we're very comfortable at the current levels uh, in terms of being able to build factories and manufacture product for our customers. In terms of the broader question for other, other folks, I think it has to do with the a combination of the economic climate and their view of the uh, regulatory environment or capital environment to, to deploy, deploy assets. And, and right now, I see us out of the worst in terms of uh, the recession. I see very slow growth in the U.S. over the next year or two, uh, but positive. And uh, on the other hand, I see a regulatory environment that still is very difficult to build factories, to build, to get permits. Uh, the taxes are not competitive compared to the global scale. So when you, when you weigh all those, I think you're start, you, you will see people keeping uh, their powder dry for a while until those get resolved. Companies like Intel have to make these investments because technology moves on. Good sign. We've talked about this. There's money on the sidelines in corporate America. Uh, it's not being deployed. That's a good sign of money starting to be deployed. If we can see more of that, we might start to put a dent in this unemployment rate.